one of the reasons why transition metals are called transition metals is because they go through different color changes. And so you can actually see them transition through their oxidation states. And so maybe they're a plus two or a plus three. You can see the color change across the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you could just sit there and watch your reaction go from, I'll just make up some colors, so some blue to green to red, and you're watching it go through different oxidation states. Wow. So you can actually monitor it. So inorganic chemists, which is what I do, we usually like color changes. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we're drawn to that field is because we work with transition metals. I've, in high school and also what I taught, which is general chemistry. So the first year of college chemistry, um, we do general trends. And so we say if something is like this, it will operate like this. We just try to identify trends. And so that the S block and the P block, so the outside areas of the periodic table, they really follow these trends. But the middle, the D block, the transition metals, don't really follow the this trends. You like prison. Are you in D and block? So <laughs> <laughs> what do you get now? Okay. And so, and so that's what's hard about teaching it, especially in high school, because there are no, like, typical trends you can go by. Gotcha. No and general so, rules. So there are general trends that you can go by. Um, and there are certain ones that always break rules, like your jewelry metals. So copper, silver, and gold will always... They're I'm going to nerd out on you, but they're usually D9, but because of the way the electrons fall, they go to D10. And so mm. they can just redistribute their electrons. I cannot get as excited about that. Yeah. <laughs>